Chapter 4 Gateway Why do you keep doing this to yourself, Nell? Mark sorrowed to Nell long ago in regards to how he always ran to Ravania when she called. Jang Yion, Upper Zuria, Second Galaxy. What does one receive if they share a union with Ravania? The daughter of night asked as she stood with Igman Grode on a lofty stone balcony, one of many on King Bakje's palace. The balcony looked out at the jungle valley of Jang Yion's southern Sang Kingdom, under the brilliant blue sky of a sweltering afternoon. The daughter of night was tall, lean, dressed in a gown of inky black. Her features were sharp but pleasing. Her eyes were bitter red, and black horns swept back from her forehead. Her hair was darker than oblivion, and her skin was gray-blue. Igman Grode had always found her attractive. Her beauty was due to her mother, not her demon father. Igman Grode wore his usual black hooded robe. His yellow eyes were like acid. His skin was pallid, almost sickly-looking. He had a yellow triangle tattoo on his left cheek, three red slashes on his right, and a tongue-like tattoo of crimson from the bottom of his lip down his chin. He turned his eyes from the Daughter of Night and gazed with the princess out at the jungles of Bakche's kingdom. The fool King Bakche dreamed of greater power. He would harbor them, and for that, gain their powers. Bakche would be useful for as long as he was. Then, Igman Grode smiled. Ravania has had seven husbands before Wrangel, you know. The first one was Zazmuj, the vast elder lord. Ravania thought he was the shadow traveler Nell. They say he was the only one she loved. And it was only because she thought it was Nell. The others were all arranged by the Overdung Council. How did they get her to do that? The daughter of Night wondered. Duty. Igman Grode chuckled. Some say Ravania changed when she married Zazmuj. Like, part of her was lost. Possibly so, possibly so. But duty is why, Igman assured. Alliance with powers. Yes, keeps the universe turning. Or so the Overdon Council says. You associate with the Overdon. Once I did, before I was cast out, the Idiki Kalsek became my cause. Your father became my hope for the sort of power I once commanded, Igman explained. Then your alliance with father is... for power? All things are for greater power, child, Igman Grode chuckled. You would do well to remember that. The daughter of night took a breath and slowly let it out. Her eyes moved to the winding river down in the valley. So then answer my first question, she said. Why do these outer powers join with Ravania? She does not love them. Do you think they would accept it, even if she could? Look to your father. He, things like him, they do not think the same as lower beings. So why, then? Why would any of these higher beings join with the Amara? What do they get out of it? What is the power they seek? The husband of Ravania inherits the castle of Ravan all the powers associated with it, and the regions he won during the Hell War. Some say there are vaults with arcane knowledge that are enticing, but cannot be opened, or have not yet, at least. They have all married her and inherited these things? The seven? The daughter of night asked. Eight, if you count Wrangel Gola. Eight, then it is. They have all been given these things? plus titles, power, abilities to move more freely, protection of the Overdon Council from attacks of other outer powers. You have to understand, Ravania's husbands, aside from Zazmuj, are low-level outer powers, ones who are under threat from greater powers. They join for their own selfish reasons. So why does Ravania do it? Duty. That is all? She gets broader areas to look after and more people to help. I suppose she likes that sort of thing, helping the downtrodden. Yes, I suppose, the daughter of night said with a little sigh. But mostly it's just the duty of it. 
The Overdon tell her she must, and out of some strange sense of self-sacrifice, she does. Something was lost. Must have been. Maybe it was, but why are you so curious about it? I'm just trying to understand it, the daughter of night answered. My spies tell me Rangogola is up to something. What sort of something? I'm not sure. Do you think he might move against us? If he does, the night of night will crush him. Do you believe? Yes. Could Rangogola be an ally? Igman Grod was silent for a moment, considering it. A very interesting proposition. Might that we should send someone to speak with him. Send me, the daughter of night grinned. But you are supposed to be kept here, safe. Your father deems it. I am the daughter of night. If Rangel Gola, like the others before him, united with Ravania for the powers it gives him, possibly he will unite with us for the same reason. And betray Ravania? Seven before him have done the same, likely for their own reasons. Likely. I will talk to the Knight of Night. If he deems it, I will send you. But if he says no, you will stay here in safety. You are needed for the destruction of the Kashna. The remnants of infinity are within our grasp. An enticing prize to be sure. Perhaps enough to draw Rangogola to our side. Unless he has seen opportunities of his own. Yes, the daughter of Night agreed. Leave me now, Igman Grode grumbled, motioning with a hand. Go. I must contact your father. We will decide what best course to take. The daughter of night bowed. Yes, Igman groaned. I take my leave. She walked off the balcony into Bakeje's palace. When she was gone, Igman groaned, rubbed his chin thoughtfully and glanced up at the two sons of Jang Yan. Very interesting, he purred. Very interesting indeed. Thank you for listening. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share with your friends, and there are more episodes on the way.